This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to answer question number eight from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P4 paper. This is the final question on this paper. And um, I'm going to start with part A. Here we're told about this curve C with parametric equations given x equals 6t minus 3 sine 2t and y equals 2 cosine t, t being between 0 and pi over 2. The curve meets the y-axis at 2, as we can see here, and the and the x-axis at k. So this point has a coordinates k, 0. This has a coordinates 0, 2. All right, so they ask us to state the value of k. Okay, where does this curve hit the x-axis? All right, so now what we can do is we can try to work that out by first finding out what is the value of t at this point, the third parameter. And we know that, you know, the point k, 0, this is where y equals 0, of course. Okay, that's the point k, 0, that's where y equals 0. So when y equals 0, we know that 2 cosine of t is also equal to 0. So cosine of t, of course, will also be 0. So t is going to be inverse cosine of 0, which is pi over 2 where the cosine curve hits the, um, you know, the x-axis. So that's going to be t equals pi over 2. Okay, so that's the value of t at the point k0. So we want to find the value of x. Okay, so we have the point k0. And we know that at this point, t equals pi over 2 and x equals k. So we have the equation x equals 6t minus 3 sine 2t. So when x equals k, you'll get k equals 6 times pi over 2 minus 3 times sine of 2 times pi over 2. Okay, that's going to give you k equals, that's 3 pi minus, and that's going to give you that sine of um, 3 times sine of pi. Now sine of pi is 0, so you'll end up with k equals 3 there's the answer to part a pretty simple one mark i don't know about that maybe it should be more but maybe they don't want people losing too many marks all right so part b says use parametric differentiation to show that dy dx equals pi sorry lambda times cosec t all right so parametric parametric differentiation we have to use here why because we don't have a function of y in terms of some function of x. We have y as a function of t and x as a function of t. So we have to use the chain rule, okay, because our objective is to find dy dx. We can find dy dt, and we can find dx dt, which if we write it as its reciprocal will be dt dx. And if I multiply them together, that's going to give me dy dx. So our objectives now are to find what dy dx are, dy dt, uh, sorry, and what dx dt is. So 2 times cosine of t, if you differentiate that, dy dt, you're going to get negative 2 times the sine of t. Okay, so that's dy dt, and we know that x equals 6t minus 3 sine of 2t. So dx dt, well, if you differentiate 6t, you get 6. If you differentiate sine 2t or 3 sine 2t you're going to get 3 cosine 2t so this is going to be minus you have 3 cosine of 2t and then you multiply that by the 2 all right so now you end up with dx dt is equal to 6 minus 6 cosine of 2t so that's dx dt now dt dx is going to be 1 over 6 minus 6 cosine of 2t. Let me just write that a bit neater. I don't know how's happening to my handwriting right now. It's getting really bad. So we, we want dt dx. So this is basically the reciprocal of this. That's 1 minus. We can even write it like this. 6 times 1 minus cosine of 2t if you want. That's fine. All right. So now what we're going to have is we put it together in this Chain rule, dy dx equals dy dt, which is minus 2 sine of t, over 
Um, it's good because when you multiply by this, you'll end up with this being this divided by by this basically, right? Because it's that times that. So it'd be it would be this multiplied by that. So this would be on the numerator. So you'll end up with six and one minus cosine two t, right? The that can cancel with that, leaving you with a three there and a one there. So we have dy dx is equal to negative sine of t over 3 times 1 minus cosine of 2t. All right, so now, how do we proceed from here? We have to end up with cosec of t. Now, cosec is related to the sine ratio because it is the reciprocal of the sine ratio. And we have a single angle, and here we have a double angle. So we have to think in our minds about the double angle formally involving cosine 2t. I can convert them into single angles in two ways. We should know by the proof, by the addition formula, how to change cosine 2t into a single angle. Either you'll get 2 cosine squared t minus 1, or you'll get 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Right? Which form do we want to use? Well, obviously, if we're trying to find things in terms of cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, then I think that would be the sensible conversion to use. So we can say dy dx equals minus sine of t over three times, and I have one minus. Now this is going to become one minus two sine squared t. Right? So now let's see how that pans out. It's looking all right, in terms of the fact we've got sines and we've got single angles. So let's see what happens. You have minus sine t over, this is three times, you're going to have one minus one, I'll just put it out, one minus one, and plus two sine squared t. Okay, so that gives you minus sine of t over three times, that's going to give you zero. So three times two sine squared of t. Okay, so that's almost there now, I think, because you're going to end up with minus sine t over 6. And you can see this is 6 sine squared t, which is like sine t times sine t. They cancel out. So you end up with minus 1 over 6, and that's going to be cosecant t. And that's what we had to show. So we can say dy dx is equal to minus 1 6 of cosecant of t. Okay, so our lambda ended up being negative 1 over 6. So there is the answer to part b of this question using parametric differentiation. Now part c, it says the point p with parameter t equals pi over 4 lies on the curve c. Okay, the tangent to c at the point p cuts the y-axis at the point n. Find the exact y coordinate of n, giving your answer in simplest form. All right, so now we need to find basically, or we need to start to find the equation, the equation of the tangent at n, right? So we need two things. We need to have the gradient of the tangent at n, and we need to have the coordinates of the point n. We need those things. When I've got those things, I can then start finding the equation of the line, the tangent, and then from that I can find where it crosses the, the y-axis. Okay, so the equation of the tangent at the point, sorry, at the point P, not N, my bad, at point P. So we need the gradient of the tangent at the point P. We need the coordinates of the point P. Sorry, N is something. N is the point we're trying to find its coordinates of, okay, where the, ta where the tangent hits the curve. To find the equation of the tangent, I need the gradient of the tangent at P because that's where the, you know, that's where the tangent hits the curve and the coordinates of the point P. All right, so that's what I need. Okay, so let me just rewrite that. So it's neater. So I don't know why I said N. It's supposed to be P. N is the final thing that I'm trying to find. Okay, so here we have... Um, the point P has coordinates X, P, and Y, P. Now, let's look at the gradient of the tangent at P. 
Okay, we know that dy dx, the gradient function for this curve, is given by minus 1 over 6 times cos secant of t. Right? So we know at p, at p, we're told that t equals pi over 4. So we can say that the gradient of the tangent at p is going to be given by minus 1 over 6 times 1 over the secant of pi over 4. Because cosecant of t is 1 over sine. Sorry. Sine, not secant. Sine of pi over 4. Sorry about that. So minus 1 over 6 times 1 over sine of pi over 4. Which is minus 1 over 6 times, and we know that the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Okay, so minus 1 over 6. Something we today. Times... That's going to be 1 over root 2 over 2, or 1 over 1 over root 2. So that's going to give you root 2. So you'll end up with um, the gradient of the tangent is going to be minus root 2 over 6. So that's the gradient of the tangent at P. Okay, the gradient of tangent at P. Now we need to find the coordinates of the point P. X, P, and Y, P. Now X, P, we know that at P... We know that t is equal to pi over 4. So for x, we can use, of course, this. I'll just bring this down so everything's in sight. Lost it. Give me a second. Bring it down this way. Okay. So we can... Is when t equals pi over 4 is going to be 6 times pi over 4 minus 3 times the sine of 2 times pi over 4. Okay, so that's going to be 3 pi over 2 minus 3 times sine a half, which is 3. Sine of a half is 1, so that's 3. So that gives you the answer. We can write it as one fraction if you want. That's 3 pi minus 6. Okay, so that's the answer to, that's the x-coordinate of p. The y-coordinate of p, well, we know that y, the coordinate of p, is 2 times the cosine of pi over 4. So that's going to be 2 times, now the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So we can say that that's going to be root 2. So we can say that p has coordinates um, 3 pi minus 6 over 2 and root 2. And we know that the gradient of the tangent at P is going to be equal to, um, we worked that out up here, that's minus root 2 over 6. So therefore, we can use the formula Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. So we have Y minus root 2 equals M, which is minus root 2 over 6 times X minus and you have 3 pi minus 6 over 2. Right, we know, we know that we don't need to actually find the equation of the line because we, they didn't tell us to find the equation of the line, but we need to start finding it in order to answer the question. But what we need to find is a place where the curve cuts the y-axis. So we can say, you know, n is on the x-axis, on, on the y-axis, sorry, on the y-axis, and we know that on the y-axis, x equals 0. So I can say y of the y-coordinate of n is going to be, or minus root 2, sorry, is going to be minus root 2 over 6 times 0 minus 3 pi minus 6 over 2. Okay, so if we calculate that, the y-coordinate of n is equal to well, let's say minus root 2 is equal to, if you multiply this out, you have positive, you'll have root 2 times 3 pi minus 6 over 2. That times that, over, over 12, sorry. Because you multiply that by that, you're going to get 12, plus root 2. Now, how does it tell us to give us our answer in its simplest form? So I think we should add these together. So we can say yn this added the root 2 at the same time at the same time added root 2 to both sides at the same time 
Okay, now this, if you want to write it as a single um, fraction, you can say this is going to be 3 pi root 2 minus 6 root 2, okay, plus, and that's going to be 12 root 2 all over 12, which is going to give me um, 3 pi root 2, root 2. Where did that 12 come from? Okay, 3 pi root 2, and then these two, when you add them together, you get plus 6 pi, 6 root 2, sorry, not pi, 6 root 2. I keep writing pi, sorry about that. Plus 6 root 2 over 12. We can see there's a common factor of 3, so we have pi root 2 plus 2 root 2 over, and that's going to be 12. They cancel to give you 4, so we end up with this, okay? We end up with this, which is basically pi root 2 plus 2 root 2 over 4. Pi root 2 plus 2 root 2 over 4. And that is the coordinates, that's a y coordinate of n. Okay, so there's the answer to this question, which is question part C of uh, this question now. Um, part D of the question is to do with basically volumes of revolution. So I'm going to save that in a separate video, which I will then, um, you know, um, put in the same playlist as this, so you'll find it easily. So. Um, you know, I think this video is going to be on too long, on too long, and also that's kind of like a separate topic, as it were. So I'll save that under volumes of revolution playlist, and the, also this paper's playlist. So I hope that was clear. Now, if you would like to see other questions from this um, paper, including the one that I'm talking about that's coming next, you'll find them in the playlist that will appear in the top right corner of your screen. The top on the bottom left right corner of your screen, sorry, you'll find other questions involving parametric equations parametric differentiation and so on. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And on the top of the screen here, you can watch a video if you click the link to it, which will tell you how to navigate through my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.